Hi, this is Marcel with Healthy Homemaking. Today I'm making pasta puttanesca in one pot, which means that you don't need two pots to boil the pasta. I'm starting by putting some olive oil in a pan. Um, it's going to be delicious. So that's the first step. Make sure your pan is over medium um, heat. Uh, it doesn't need to be too hot at this point. Now I'm opening up the anchovies, and if you think you don't like them, you are wrong. <laughs> So I think you're gonna love them if you have them in this dish. You don't really taste the anchovies because they melt into the sauce. They just give it some kind of umami is what chefs call it. Um, so they just make the dish a lot richer. So just add, I, I add two to three, uh, maybe four um, anchovies. Um, these are packed in salt, um, so they add a little bit of saltiness to the dish. I don't actually add salt to this dish at all because the olives that you're going to see later are salty already and so are the anchovies. Now garlic. So uh, garlic is my favorite part of making pasta because I already buy them already peeled. Um, and even if they weren't peeled, you could use this method at the same time. Um, so I just um, get the cloves onto the cutting board and then I whack them with the knife as you can see one at a time just on the flat of your knife you just whack them like that and uh, and then in no time they're ready then the, the chopping up is a lot easier once you do that so if you've just started to cook or you're not sure how to handle garlic this is a good way to start <laughs> and um, cutting them like I said is a lot easier and you can do a lot of them at one time so that's uh, one great thing about chopping garlic. Instead of using a garlic press or anything like that, um, I don't really like garlic gadgets, um, the peelers, the, um, the garlic presses. I just do it with my knife. It's a lot easier. Um, so after this, I'm going to add the garlic to the anchovies. Uh, I'm breaking them up a little bit with my, um, with my spoon or spoonula. Um, and then I'm going to add the garlic and like I said this is over medium heat medium low depending on your stove you need to get to know your stove well if you're going to start cooking um, if you're a seasoned cook you already know this so now I'm adding the garlic and it's going to start sizzling um, which is a fun thing to to hear <laughs> then you know you're really cooking when the garlic starts sizz um, sizzling and you can smell it so it's really delicious um, so I'm breaking up the anchovies a little bit more they start melting into the oil and they get married to the garlic which is good um, so they get to be one flavor um, so this is a very easy sauce you know this is something you can do on a weeknight when you don't really feel like cooking I'm adding the olives now these are Kalamata olives um, I like black olives um, for my puttanesca even though they're Greek Kalamata or Greek you can use any uh, oil cu cured uh, black olives as well so I'm just chopping them up a little bit these are already small I bought them in a four pound tub from Amazon which is one of the best things I've ever bought so if you just search for four pound Kalamata olives on Amazon you can get a great deal on them it's a lot less expensive than buying them at the grocery store so that's a good tip for you so I'm adding them. I like to saute them with the garlic and the and the anchovies as well. Some people add them after the tomatoes. I like to saute them and get them coated with the oil and the garlic so those flavors um, all come together. Um, so as I was saying, this is a very easy sauce. This is something, especially in one pot, I think it's a lot easier. Um, and uh, now I'm going to add the parsley. So I keep, I keep my parsley in a Ziploc bag already washed and ready to go. Um, so I do that when I bring it home from the store. Uh, and I'm putting a good, a good amount in, uh, maybe a quarter cup uh, or so. Um, so that's probably going to come to about three or four tablespoons once it's already chopped up. Um, as, as you can see, a large knife is a good thing. It really helps to get your work done quickly and easily. It's not hard on your hands or on your wrist. If you have a small knife, you're going to be straining a lot to get your work done. So invest in a good knife. I have had this knife for 19 years. So it's a Vostov. And if you cook, you know that that's one of the best knives that you can buy. I have never needed to buy another knife. So I haven't bought one in 19 years. So that's, uh, that's a good thing to do if you're looking for a new knife Vustoff is the way to go so I like to add the parsley to what I'm sauteing as well 
um i like to get all of those flavors together make sure that they have time together um and you know just make sure that you're paying attention to the heat um and that it's not too hot so that the garlic won't burn if you burn garlic you have to start all over again that's the one thing and then you've already wasted all of those ingredients because the flavor is not going to go away now i'm adding tomato paste i uh, keep it in um a little tupperware like that i don't keep it in the in the can um and i'm adding about two tablespoons maybe a little more um, this is all very, you know, uh, very much about what you like. So I add the tomato paste to give some body to the sauce. I'm going to add crushed tomatoes later, but I like to saute the tomato paste with everything else so that it gets um, cooked and uh, it starts to stick to the bottom of the, of the pan there, of the skillet. So that's one of the things about good cooking you want to cook things well so um unless you're talking about a steak then <laughs> medium wear is fine but you know sauteing the tomato paste changes the taste so that's why you do it um i've been cooking for about 21 years now and these are just things that i've learned as i go nobody you know told me to do these things i just learned uh, from experience so now i'm going to let this i'm going to let this saute a little bit um put some ingredients away clean up a little bit i like to clean up as i go um and i'm going to add some um red pepper flakes i don't like to add them with the oil because it goes all over the house and then everybody's sneezing so i add the, the red pepper flakes after the wet ingredients have gone in so the tomato paste and the olives and that way you don't get that effect nobody's sneezing it's a lot easier and you still get the spiciness um, i added about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon i like it spicy but if you're not used to red pepper flakes go on the lighter side at first so um that's that's my advice if you like spicy food then you know you can add up to a tablespoon i don't know who could stand that but you know i may have done that before and now i'm adding a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes um and these are very saucy i prefer crushed tomatoes to diced because it really gives a lot of body to the sauce um, i do not like whole tomatoes because then you have to put them in the food processor and clean the food processor and you know i really don't like them and i don't do them by hand either some some italians do crush the tomatoes by hand i don't do that so now i'm just um stirring everything up getting everything together there and then next i'm going to add two to three cups of beef broth so this makes it taste like a sauce that cooked all day and this varies because you're going to see me adding the pasta there i'm going to add about maybe two and a half cups or so um, i had about four cups in that in that uh, measuring cup um, as you can see it's very saucy but it needs to be that way it needs to be very liquidy because the, that's what the pasta is going to cook in so the pasta needs enough liquid and i'm going to put about three cups of uh, rotini pasta in or fusilli depending on what you call it uh it's the corkscrew pasta in america that's what we call it corkscrew um so where i come from we call it fusilli so um i'm adding about three cups uh, it can, you can go up to four cups as well with the same amount of liquid um and you'll probably serve four to six people you'll see at the end that it becomes um very swollen up and you know it's it's really it's really a lot of food and you know that pasta you know i always cook a lot more than i need to but <laughs> that's just the <clears throat> excuse me that's just the way it is so um that's um a good thing to pay attention to how much you're adding and then you'll see me clean up a little bit put things away that's the best thing about about food so uh, i'm going to cover it now it needs to be covered so that the pasta cooks correctly um and i'm going to look at the heat there and then turn it down uh right now i'm going to let it first um bubble up <laughs> Once it comes to a boil, then we turn it down. So right now I probably have it um, at about an eight or nine on my stove. Um, my stove is not a gas stove, it's electric. So if you have a gas stove, you'll be paying attention to the flame. Uh, but on an electric stove, mine is at about an eight or nine so that it will 
heat up faster and come up to a boil. Now that it's come up to a boil, you can see those large bubbles on the surface that's boiling. So you turn it down. I turn mine down to about two or three. So um, that's the first thing that you need to do to make sure that it doesn't burn on the bottom because there is a lot of sugar in that sauce because of the tomatoes. So we're going to get a shot of after 15 minutes or so. Um, that's how, how I like my pasta cooked uh, 13 to 15 minutes I would start checking at about 13 and then that's what it looks like at the end um, you didn't need to pass you didn't need to boil water you didn't need to boil pasta you just did it all in you know in one pot um, in one skillet so that's the best thing and you can see how saucy it is i like mine saucy so i added about three cups if you like yours with less sauce then you would add up to four cups um and um that's what it came to uh and it will be a little bit less saucy than this um but you know it's a delicious dish everybody loves it my family eats it a lot and uh it's so easy to make like in literally 15 to 20 minutes um, you can have dinner on the table and you just add this with some garlic bread maybe a quick salad that you're making while it's cooking and you have dinner I see you next time